Namaste, Adab, and a very good morning to you. A hearty welcome to our daily discussion, analysis, and Q&A platform, Varta Visleshana. The second Thursday of every March is designated World Kidney Day, which happens to be today. Today is World Kidney Day. Under the rib cage of the human body, on each side of the spinal cord are two bean-shaped structures, organs, called the kidneys. Whoever created the human body and gave the functions to the kidney is, I think, by far a stroke of genius. Kidneys filter blood, kidneys regulate blood pressure, kidneys maintain fluid balance of the body and uh, kidneys remove toxins and if they hadn't done this the human body will be will accumulate waste so imagine the role of kidney in keeping a human body healthy so uh, to tell us all about its functions its care and its safeguards we have dr ratan ja dr ratan ja is the senior consultant nephrologist and transplant physician who has experience in treating kidney ailments for over 30 years. Thank you for coming to Doordarshan. Welcome. First off, the theme of World Kidney Day 2020 is kidney health for everyone everywhere, from protection to detection, equitable access to care. Dr. Cha, please tell us what is equitable access to care. We have to realize that the kidney disease is a very serious uh, problem which is seen to affect roughly 10 percent of population the world over. And it has been found that countries which have not having a kind of uh, good uh, medical facilities, uh, the people, particularly the poor people are not having access to have a diagnosis at an early stage to get their disease treated well which is a kind of crippling problem for them. So far economics is concerned because the disease is too costly to treat when it becomes advanced. So hence, this year the, this, the, the, the NKF foundation has brought this theme to say that we should treat the uh, disease well in both poor as well as the rich class and they should have access to all kinds of diagnosis as well as treatment at an early stage. So, are we saying equitable, when we say equitable access to care, are we saying that it is, it is an expensive treatment, hence not um, accessible by the poor of the world? Is that it? It, it means this, that only, that like the, the developed countries are able to take care of this disease quite early by the routine kind of screening procedures, while in the developing world, most of the people are not having access to the investigations particularly and because of their ignorance, because of lack of publicity about this disease, people are reporting late and hence that is the theme. What are the functions of a kidney broadly? One has to just understand that kidney is considered to be an amazing washing machine. That is the simplest way to talk about that. It is a washing machine. It washes the blood of its impurities, but that is a very simple way to talk about that. The five important functions of kidney which most of the people can understand are one to remove the waste product that is whatever you are consuming it is producing a lot of waste products like urea and creatinine which is a kind of marker to say that this is the waste that we check in the blood which is removed by the body. The second important function of kidney is to take care of the minerals that is it takes care of the salt balance, the potassium balance and many other kinds of minerals and when they get disordered it produces high blood pressure or swelling. The third important function of kidney is to produce blood by producing a very important hormone which is called erythropoietin and when kidney becomes weak, people become anemic uh, that they are having less amount of blood. The fourth important function of kidney is to maintain a good health of bones by producing an active vitamin D. So, whatever vitamin D that we get from the sunlight ultimately gets activated in the kidney to act on bone and other structures. So, if the kidney becomes diseased, the bones become brittle and there is increased risk of fracture. 
and a last function which has to be also understood is that kidney tries to retain all the important things in the body and if kidney become diseased it is not able to retain a protein or albumin that we say and kidney disease can present with loss of protein in the urine which um, comes to the picture because of swelling the legs. So, these may be the five important functions, but as a layman if you talk about ki how the people understand one of the function of kidney is water balance means if water is not able to balance properly they, they have swelling or dehydration salt balance if they are not able to take care of salt properly they develop hypertension then and uh, the, the hemoglobin production that is erythropoietin production if it is not produced properly they become anemic urea creatinine removal if they are not able to remove it the toxins builds up in the body and we try to detect it by checking the blood reports by what you say i understand is kidney the hardest working organ in the body the kidney is working 24 by 7 exactly. It is said that uh, almost 20 percent of blood which is pumped from the heart goes to kidney and almost 1800 liters of blood, blood. This blood is filtered every day and out of that only 1.5 to 3 liters of urine is produced the remaining thing gets absorbed. So, kidney is working all the time very efficiently and if it fails then you have all kind of poisoning this is a kind of poisoning urea and creatinine can be considered as a poison in the system which is not getting removed. They are toxins if they are not removed then they accumulate mm -hmm. in the body giving rise to all kinds of illness. Yes. So, you mentioned uh, vitamin D processing in the kidney yes. these days vitamin D deficiency is very very common one yes. notices. So, does that have something to do with all our kidneys that are not able to process vitamin D or is it that we are not getting enough sunlight? Uh, the, the second thing is correct that we are not getting enough sunlight or because of some environmental pollution the, the, the sunlight is not able to activate the process in the skin. Oh, okay. And that whatever vitamin D that we are getting through sunlight ultimately gets processed in the liver as well as kidney to get the maximum uh, effect etcetera. So, as the fallout of extreme urbanization comes sedentary lifestyle. So, have our lifestyles uh, affected our kidneys? Have our yeah. lifestyle changes affected our kidneys? This is partially true etcetera that our lifestyle has affected the kidney by bringing certain diseases like hypertension, diabetes and obesity. These are three things which are affecting the kidney to a large extent. Though other things in the our uh, lifestyle to which we get exposed that is too much of urbanization. Uh, what do you mean when you say too much of urbanization? We, like by, by the term urbanization, we mean that now we are always uh, yes, uh, we, we are we are exposed to a lot of noise pollution. We are exposed to a lot of uh, this uh, environment. Noise pollution also matters. In, uh, it, it, it has been said that noise pollution have an impact on the blood pressure. So oh. that may indirectly affect the kidney, and the pollution from the chemicals like so the petrol as well as dust etc is now being considered to be some way uh, affecting the whole body system and it produces kidney damage. So, is the intake of water highly vital for the efficient functioning of the kidney intake of water? Yes, it is It is. It is said that the kidney being a very important organ of to control the water balance it can manage to remove all the toxins uh, uh, till you take less than or uh, till 500 ml. So, if you are taking even uh, uh, five, uh, 1 liter of water you will produce 500 ml of urine. So, you need to have at least 500 ml of urine output to take care of your toxin removal. If you take less than 1 liter of water probably the waste will start accumulating. It is said the best amount of water to take is around 2 to 3 liters in the one winter month and in the summer month maybe 3 and half to 4 liters to produce 2 liter of urine. Normally, we do not measure urine output. We can have an idea that are we producing enough urine or not by the color of the urine etcetera. If urine is transparent it is not looking yellow it means you are taking enough water. Let us take a short break and then we come back we have more on how the kidney functions and how to take care of it stay with us.
Welcome back. Kidney stones seem to be a common occurrence. Why do they form and how do they form? Uh, normally, whatever we eat ultimately produces a lot of waste which has to get filtered in a soluble form. So, what the, uh, the minerals that we are taking uh, orally is getting filtered and coming in the urine in a soluble form. When the minerals are more in amount in the urine that is a lot of calcium, phosphorus, uh, they have a tendency to precipitate if enough fluid is not there that enough uh, urine is not getting produced. So, so the do the minerals get calcified or something? What happens that like when, when we are taking tea and we are adding kind of sugar, we try to mix it, it remains in soluble form, but if you add too much of sugar, it get, get precipitated. Same thing is there that if there, there could be super saturation of urine with too much of minerals, if you are taking lot of minerals or there could be super saturation because of less amount of fluid or water being taken etcetera. So, simple, simple statement will be that if lot of salt is being taken it somehow has an impact on increased calcium excretion. So, increasing taking lot of salt and taking less of water has a chance to increase the risk of stone formation in those who are genetically susceptible that we will we'll always realize that not all people who take less water develop stone. So, there are some certain things which are more which are not defined and it is said that it could be because of genetic factors also. So, super saturating the urine by taking lot of salts, lot of non waste or taking less amount of water increases the risk of stone formation in those who are susceptible. So, are you saying that genetic factors play a role in kidney ailments? Genetic factors play a role in lot of diseases including kidney ailments and as well as stone diseases because certain stone diseases are much more common in certain kind of uh, population and certain kind of uh, 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 religious practices etcetera that we have so seen. So, where I am coming from is it is the food intake we take that, that forms the stone. So, can it be genetic is what I wanted to know. The f food is always a factor which influences the stone formation. But fluid is also an equally important factor. Oh, food and fluid okay. both have to be considered together because food is giving the solute. It's not just the food. Uh, right. Yes, it is not just the food, etc. Uh, Dr. Jha, at what size do the stones pass out of the body and at what size do they have to be surgically removed? Now, this is a very uh, good question because this is question is asked by many of my patients. Uh, it is said that if the stones are less than 5 millimeter in size, they can spontaneously get passed out, but if the stones are above 10 millimeter in size, then they will require some kind of surgical procedure. Between 5 to 10 is a chance it can come out with, or it may come out with some kind of medical drug therapy which are prescribed by us to hasten the stone to pass out. So, lifestyle diseases like blood pressure and diabetes, they are known to directly affect the functioning of the kidney. How does it exactly happen in blood pressure and how does it happen in diabetes? Uh, diabetes and hypertension is said to be the two most common causes of kidney failure which, will which may require even dialysis if it is not treated early. Uh, both of them directly affects the kidney, both blood pressure and diabetes and you will also find that most of the patients who develop the diabetes develop hypertension in the long run. So, they are practically a kind of uh, friends, uh, hypertension uh, is always associated with diabetes and many patients who are uh, having hypertension may subsequently develop diabetes. So, what happens that when the diabetes is affecting the system, it, it affects the, the filtering kind of uh, this, uh, this apparatus in the kidney which is called glomerulus. So, diabetes is a kind of disease which affects the filter or glomerulus of the kidney etcetera. By so, is, is that the pressure of the blood that uh, weakens the kidney wall or how does it work in, in blood pressure? Di diabetes is a disease which is a… I am talking about blood pressure. Ah, blood pressure the, the pressure which ultimately affects the so. uh, the, the filter etc. the wall of the, mm, wall of the yeah, kidney filter. and uh, it has got it, in, it, 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 it tries to produce lot of other kind of chemical reactions called cytokines and other kinds of things which ultimately affects the kidney. A human being can survive just as well with one kidney, is not there a lot of workload on one single one single kidney? It, it, uh, one, uh, 
we have we have been provided two kind of kidneys by God to take care of our the load that is there. But if a person uh, donates one kidney to one of his kitten kin, still he can have a normal life because the other kidney takes over the function. But so is there load on this kidney? Yes, it has been realized that the load is there, etc. But it is not sufficient to produce kidney damage. Uh, to need a, a kind of dialysis, etc. Okay. Right there, okay. many people are born with only one kidney and still they have a normal life. It is said that if you have one kidney, definitely there is increased load on that kidney and there is a risk of hypertension, etc. Oh, it doesn't affect the lifespan in any way. It, it doesn't affect the lifespan in most of the people, etc. Unless they develop diabetes or some other kind of risk factors are there. Let's come to kidney transplants. What kind of matching? criteria do you follow as a protocol when you have to match when you have to give a kidney to a patient it, the first thing that when you do a, a kidney transplant we try to match the blood group that is uh, blood group has same to match same blood group uh, yes same blood group is match but these days we are doing transplants even against the blood group that is which was earlier said to be not possible is possible now but one has to understand that if you match the blood group, the transplant cost is less. And when you are trying to do a transplant against the blood group, we require almost double the cost to do the transplant. So, is it done in India? Yes, against, it is done. Uh, yes, against the blood group also is done. That is called ABO incompatible transplant. But it requires almost double the cost and requires the expertise for evaluating many things, which requires in addition to It is a more complicated procedure. Procedure is not complicated, but the uh, the workup as well as the precaution that has to be taken is complicated. And does the body accept most of the time the donor to the receiver? Uh, in, in, a, in a transplant where the body match has been established, that the blood group is matching, HLA is matching, uh, it is it it is it, it usually accepts. But when when you are doing an ABO incompatible transplant, there is a risk of immediate rejection, uh, which can happen despite taking all precautions. What is the percentage of matching in same blood group and uh, survival, I mean acceptance? Uh, uh, it is said that if you are do, go, go, going for a mass transplant that ABO compatible transplant, it is said more, almost more than 95 percent of people have a kidney survival at one year. So, it is a very highly successful transplant etc. By the term matching, we are not talking only about 95 a, is a good percentage. Percent etc. And it, by the term matching, we do not mean that only blood group. There are many other kind of things like oh. HLA we match and so many other kind of genetic factors we match. But first thing is blood group we match etc. And um, at what stage does dialysis become necessary? It, it is said that we will uh, the kidney disease have no symptom till uh, the, the kidney damage is more than 50 percent. After mm -hmm. the damage goes to 70 percent, the symptoms are clearly visible. And when the kidney damage is more than 90 percent, and when the kidney function is less than 10 percent, then probably people will require dialysis. Few people can tolerate the failure till 95 percent. That is, when the GFR has gone below 5, then they require dialysis. So, it is all the immune system of the person? It is not the immune system. As the disease is slow to progress, uh, many people are able to adapt to the changes, etc. And why does the kidney stop filtering uh, creatinine and uh, urea and send it right back to the blood, which is a dangerous thing? Why does it happen? Uh, as I have said that the kidney is a amazing uh, the washing machine. If the filters, which which is said Are to be damaged. damaged, it is not able to filter, filter it out. Except normally, we will continue to produce urea and creatinine. Urea is coming from food and creatinine is basically coming from the muscles because uh, th so this is a constant process so urea and creatinine cannot production cannot be stopped it is a, a process of uh, the, the body etc so the, that when the filtering capacity decreases automatically it starts building it up etc so our diet and obesity do they affect kidney function well diet by itself we may not affect the, uh, the kidney, but if it is containing, it is not a healthy diet that it contains lot of salt, it contains lot of sugar, which oil, can oil. Uh, oil. So, all of them indirectly produces an impact by producing either hypertension, diabetes or dyslipidemia that is lipid disorders and which are basically friends, bad friends mm -hmm. trying to 
damage the system. They have an indirect effect on the kidney, etc. So basically, no fat is the mantra. Then fat leads to all kinds of. Uh, we said pressures that we should not take excess fat, etc. In a younger age group, our calorie intake can be managed with 30 percent fat. Burn it. Uh, but as we become a bit old. older, we need to take only 10 percent of fat. 20 percent can come from protein, and 50, 50 to 60 percent can come from carbohydrate. That is, out of 100 percent. Well, 60 percent would be carbohydrate, 20 percent protein and 10 to 20 percent is your fat. So, they say pain painkillers straight away harmful to the kidneys. So, why not other medicines? Why only painkillers are harmful to the kidneys? Uh, that, that, that is a uh, thing which is a uh, too sim uh, simplistic statement because painkillers are the common drugs which are taken over the counter without a drug prescription also. And as pain is a thing for which most of the patients come to doctor or may not come to doctor, go to chemist, they take the tablets on their own, etc. But there are many drugs which produce kidney damage. It's not only the painkillers. Painkillers are taken by the patient on their own. Oh, it is not only the painkillers. There are many, many drugs. So, one drug is a very important cause of kidney failure the worldwide. Painkiller is tops the list. So, the solution is do not self medicate. Yeah, that is the statement. And uh, I want to ask you is the kidney as regenerative as the liver? Uh, probably liver is uh, much more, uh, much more uh, versatile in regen regeneration. Kidney damage uh, when it happens, it produces some kind of mark in the kidney. It is not 100 percent recovery, though function may look to be normal, etc. It is said that even the acute kidney failure, which earlier we think that it recovers totally, is not true. 50 percent chances of uh, partial recovery is there, only 50 percent recovers. So, percent. kidney has a reserve, so which may not get clearly picked up in the blood report. So, there is always a kind of residual damage which remains. It is not kidney does not recover to the same extent as it happens in liver disease. So, cancer of the kidneys, what are the instances very rare or very common uh, in your experience? The, the, as our uh, age is increasing, as, as our lifestyle is changing, we are seeing more and more cancer, etc. Cancer is a disease which is mostly seen by the urologist, the other specialist of kidney disease. We are a medical specialist of kidney disease or nephrologist, and urologists are the surgical specialists. They take care of that. It is increasing, it is said, the, the, the prevalence is increasing. So, how to know in one if one has a kidney disease? Apparently, it is silent. So, how does one know and how to protect ourselves? Uh, this is a very vital question that the kidney disease symptoms are very late to appear. The symptoms which can alert somebody to uh, uh, get investigated for kidney disease are swelling in the legs, both legs, not one leg, etc. Second symptom could be but, uh, passing less amount of urine, which is frothy. Third symptom could be passing reddish urine, etc. So, this could be a urinary change etcetera, passing reddish urine, passing frothy urine, passing less amount of urine or having both legs swelling and face swelling. So, that means the water is not getting coming out of the system. So, this water means is being retained. Retained etcetera. This is the commonest symptom with which patient comes. The other symptoms which could alert to the possibility of kidney disease is having blood pressure high at a younger age or having a back pain and feeling tired. Uh, anemia. So, these are the very vague symptoms which, which will not uh, be easy for anybody to understand is a kidney disease. The commonest symptoms are this reduction in urine output, red color urine and swelling of the legs. I have 10 more questions to ask, but time does not per permit. Thanks for talking to Doordarshan. Thank you. Thank you. You have given us so much information. Now, we are well informed about kidneys. Today on World uh, Kidney Day, let us pe pledge to respect our kidneys because like Dr. Jha said, it is the best washing machine that you could have. If there is no washing machine, then it will be full of toxins. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Same time tomorrow morning, please come back to watch Varta Visleshana. Until then, have a nice day.